get real learning, it needed to have something more than what was happening in the traditional classroom. So if anybody says, um, I wish they had a school like this when I was a kid, that would probably be about the five millionth time we've heard that. People look at it and at first they go, wow, that's a school. And then when they start to see what the kids are doing, they have a different perspective altogether. We believed that you learn by doing. It should be based on real world problems, situations. So when they leave here, they're ready for whatever they pursue. We're an Explorations Academy uh, that we try to take students out into the real world and try to get them to explore science, nature, um, hands-on activities. This is the Tomaki Clownfish, okay? The difference between this and the Clownfish only has one stripe. We're in the middle of a lava field. The school has been built by the hands of the community, basically students, teachers, uh, volunteers, uh, everybody putting in a little bit at a time. And so the school's grown organically as opposed to a your normal neighborhood school that would be planned in somebody's office. And then it'll go through. And as you can see over here, we have um, the root system, they'll hang down. A lot of times teachers will come to us and not really not used to this notion of uh, giving choice and control over to the students to such a high degree. Many of our teachers don't have their own spot. It's the car where they keep their stuff. They don't have their own desk. Any questions on these guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little more clear? If you love doing creative, innovative things, trying new things, being outdoors, collaborating, then you'd be fine. You're outdoors again, and uh, you're working on large-scale projects as opposed to sitting in a classroom and receiving information. Uh, it's a very skills-focused and performance-based curriculum where uh, the students are looking for things that are of interest to them in, in the realm of science. We have two sections of biology, like an agriculture-related biology and a marine science-related biology. And so the kids get to know a little bit of content that has to do with those two things. And so that way they're able to think of things that they may be curious about and that they can make into kind of a realistic project here on campus. And so that's when they would come up with their idea, find a mentor and an advisor, and then um, go ahead and write a proposal for that project. Okay, thank you. You need this kind of support group and all these people who can help you because we all have different responsibilities. We're not just on one project, we're on six or seven. Does it have communication? The students will come up with a background of that, whatever you're gonna do. Um, come up with a budget, the materials, um, your mentor that was going to help you through um, the project. Also your problem statement, hypothesis, uh, global importance, how it's going to help the environment. At the end of your proposal, when it's all done, you get it graded by three teachers who give you the okay and then you present it in front of the whole school. Yeah, so this is our high school robotics team. We competed in a few games so far. If a student wants to build anything really and the student is motivated enough to, like anything can really be done. This one's um not as from scratch, you don't have to come up with, a, you can't be as broad as your ideas by just stay, sticking with the kit. The Shark Lagoon that we have here, a special ed student came up with this idea. I didn't think it was possible. The student was really motivated, she went out and found a mentor, she went out and found sponsorship, she got one of the um, local stores to donate a swimming pool at first, above ground pool, and she did all the research and she was totally motivated. I think that's where the rigor comes in is because they put a lot of pressure upon themselves because of that internal motivation that they have. And so I think what ends up being the final product of that is they have great oral communication skills. They know how to plan their time. They are ready for a college-like environment because they're ready for that self-directed process. Right, more. Yep. Uh, up. You need to learn to step back and let the kids pursue their ideas, and you'd be amazed at what can be accomplished. So there's on-campus projects and off-campus projects. Yeah. 
How many on campus, how many off campus? Um, there's probably about 10 different off-campus projects. There's way too many on-campus projects to count. This is the Deep Sea Project. And this is our tropical fish area. This is a rainmaker. First stage of the aquatic system. Student-made reef tank. Compost tea project. Robotics team. Native ponds project. The observation projects. This is a project that I personally started. This quarter, we are comparing the plankton diversity, whether it's homogeneous or heterogeneous. All the water funnels into this net, and um, it catches all the plankton in it, and then we use an even finer net to catch all the organisms. This we just do this about twice a week, um, so we have a big enough data sample. We found more than 500 different individual animals in over 250 different species. After we collect the data, we put it all on the computers. We have a graph of new species found. They they have a quarterly portfolio where it has all of their work in for that quarter. So, and it's extremely writing intensive. MLA format where you have your abstract. They're required to do so many things and put it all together to show this product at the end that says, here, this is what I've done this quarter. Everything is so created by the student. It was such a great learning opportunity. It makes children more in control of their learning, and it makes them actually care about learning. We want to actually do this. You don't really realize you're learning it until you get tested and you're like, oh, I know this. If someone says, this is your tank, and these are your creatures, if you don't take care of them, they'll die, then you feel more in tune with your learning. You feel like what you do matters. To see the growth of the kids, that was amazing to me. I mean, we had kids who were, you know, like, yeah, I'm kind of interested, but by the end, they're like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be an engineer, you know? And just to see that um, transformation in kids to say, this is something I could do, this is something I'd like to do, and it's something that um, is available to me, you know? Just to see that change in a kid is just, that, that's great. <laughs> Never be afraid to take a risk, to think outside the box, because taking risks, you could discover something awesome.